I must confess, I have not got enough um, tile of hydrogen to make the whole uh, recipe. It costs almost a kilogram of it. So I'm just going to go for a um, well, 12 litre batch. So I've got um, tarified weed, which is about 450. Uh, chocolate. I haven't got enough chocolate either, actually. So I put um, 100 grams of chocolate and 50 grams of roasted barley. And then that's about 2 kilograms of uh, marisotto. Uh, so yeah, that's all ready to go in. And... I've had to actually done a few adjustments on the uh, on the recipe as well, and uh, but yes, we're uh, ready for brew day. Well, yes, ready for the day making the beer. So um, there we are. So I'll see you all Saturday. Good morning. I'm going to no, it's not morning. I made my best effort as ever to um, get out of bed. It really is morning, but it's now. Five past twelve. So anyway, had a few good beers last night. Got a few beers tonight as well. A few some nice food as well. And um, anyway, I'm going to make a small brew. I did intend to make a big brew, but I had, but I, I have to do have to do a half batch uh, because I'm going to have twelve five wheat, and I kind of can't be asked to go and buy any more. And here I've got. Uh, some marisotta, some chocolate, loads of tarified wheat, and a little bit of um, roasted barley just to make up the black but the chocolate. I'm gonna didn't have enough chocolate. Um, mash it in at 66, treated with um, a bit of uh, a bit of cabinet tablet to just dissipate all chlorine and stuff. Um, Treated with about two millilitres, maybe a one and a half millilitres of phosphoric uh, acid, eighty five percent, to get the pH down a bit. It's not; it may not bring it all the way down because it's a little bit less phosphoric than recommended. But I've been, I want to have it about four point five pH today. Uh, what else? Um, no, that, that's about it. Um, it's obviously going to be about five percent. In the end, I'll tell you my figures, which I'm expecting as I go along, and that's it. Let's mash it. Okay, hopefully you can see most of that. Uh, this is great going from water, so it's not much really. It's going to be out into it. But anyway, pour it in there. That's what I've actually done in the uh, beer making with tarified wheat for ages. So, uh, the tarified wheat gives more body and it's going to give that nice deep velvety uh, flavour to the stout once it's all uh, mashed in there. I was quickly reading online and it's, you can't actually mash a tarified wheat on its own. So, what you've got to do is to actually mash it with a uh, with another malted grain, which is obviously the malted, the, the malted, it's the, uh, the marisotto in here, but that's been malted and it's uh, got all the enzymes in there. Anyway, that's going to be a quick one today, hopefully. I want to get all done and dusted by at least four o'clock. I don't want to be hanging around much later than that. Um, I want to, um, I'm going to be using some Cephal 04 yeast today. I haven't really got any, anything special to that for the yeast, but I think what's going to really shine with this uh, beer is is all the malts. Well, That's looking good. Oh, well, 
all the dough balls have gone, it looks nice and uh, mixed up. What I will do is about halfway through the mash I'll just um, whip the top off and give it another stir to make sure it's uh, properly combined. Anyway, let's get the, uh, oh, it's all so loose. Anyway, let's get the other stuff in there and get it going. So as ever, top place on. I'm using the uh, short uh, mashing pipe today, which and top on. Uh, that's not quite right. Okay. You often find sometimes when you turn the pump on initially it doesn't work straight away. You just have to like clear a bit of air out of it. Let's try again. There we are. 15 minutes down the line. I've chilled this down to about 20 degrees. Uh, got my PHB to here. Let's quickly test it in the normal water. It's only about 7.5% Bristol water is. Which, predictably, predictably it is. Okay, see, I'm looking for a pH of about 5.4 today. So, oh, 5.7. So I need to do a slight adjustment here to get down to about 5.4. Um, what I normally do, I pop it in my uh, pop it into beer smith. What, what it is at the moment, it just tells me how much more acid to put in. So yeah, we'll um, do that now, and uh, we'll take another pH reading in a second. Got beer smith up here. Um, my measure, ma measured mass pH is 5.7. So we'll just quickly adjust this figure here. And it tells me I need to stick another 1.9 millilitres in there to get the uh, get to the right pH, which I will do now and see if we'll take another test. Okay, so I, let, I put some more acid in, let the mash a bit longer, and now it's down to 5.1, which is too low. But what I, what I will let, what will happen is when I sparge, the um, water that I'm sticking in will have a higher pH, and hopefully that will compensate. Um, what I think I need to do is just to leave it uh, sparging a little bit longer than the 15 minutes that I normally do. I've noticed actually that the... Um, the water is flowing around quite slow, so what I've had to, had to do actually is to just edge back a bit on the on this here, so that it actually goes a bit slower. So look in there, look. There we are. So it's going a bit slower there, but what I'm finding is that I'm getting some um, vacuum creating down there. The water's not actually not. Um, having enough water come through and the overflow is not working properly which is a bit disappointing but um, I think here we are right I'll come back to you soon okay so I've got the um, I come up to a mash out at 75 degrees and just sparge just letting the water dry out now I'm just going to push the uh, screen to the top of the drain bed which it has, and it's not sparging. I've got about uh, another eight litres of uh, water here, 
I've treated it with a Camden tablet, but I haven't done any pH reading, uh, any pH adjustment on the water because I want to um, help, hopefully help the uh, water to rise up to about a pH of about 5.6. We're all there. So obviously we'll see how, how well it comes out. Um, I'll show you the colour in a while once it's finished charging. Okay, well, one thing I have noticed quite a lot, as usual, is I'm getting quite a lot of, um, then again, I've got a lot of grain coming through. You can see it's all stuck to the side of the basket here, and I suppose there's quite a lot in there as well. Uh, this is, so this is what I'm try, going to try to come back with getting a, uh, a bag to actually stick the grain in, but it's smashing in here as well, which I've just ordered, and hopefully I will, should have it mid next week. And uh, the next brew day I have, I'll um, test it out. Hopefully it doesn't actually impede the flow too much, but um, it is a general irritant. This is, it's just get really get my nerves of the amount of grain that's actually getting through. Um, so today I'm using my own challenger hops. Um, they want something like about 40 IBUs. Um, in fact, my hops strength down to about... Uh, Five IBUs. So hopefully I'll be getting 50 or above, but uh, we'll soon see. Um, a bit of a gamble, I suppose. I'm just winging it. But anyway, in they go. Um, I'll give them a stir in a second once they start to break up a bit, because they're a little bit frozen at the moment. And uh, we'll give this an hour. Oh, and, and another thing I want to say is I've just taken my uh, pre-boil uh, pH, and it's 5.6, and it's supposed to be between 5.6 and 5.8. So um, actually sticking the water in afterwards has actually equalised it out and brought it to the correct pre-boil pH, which is good. That will allow the, um, the hops to, to actually... Uh, get all the bitterness out of them quite, quite um, well. So I'm 45 minutes into the boil. It's all going nice and rollingly as it does. Um, I'm just going to get my um, uh, my counterplug here sterilised. What I have done, I give it a bit of a wash out a few weeks ago. I did a soak a lot of these pipes in uh, sodium carbonate, I think it is. The stuff that you get in these oxygen based cleaning things. So um, there's quite a lot of uh, algae and stuff inside the pipes. So I, as I said, I rinsed it out of that. It seems to have got rid of most of it. It's quite good. Um, and I think it sterilised that as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn the pump on so that it flushes out any of the liquid. So that's a bit of liquid flushed out and then I'll put it in here to recirculate for a while. What do we do? I just shove it down the side of the um the clip here. Ugh. And get that in there eventually. Just get that there. But yeah, let's just chuck the whole pipe in and see if that works. That's working fine. And yeah. There you go. Let the air come out of it. So we flushed all the steriliser out and we let it recirc for a while. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to toss um, the other 50 grams I've got left over in for aroma hops at the end. So perhaps we get a bit of hoppy aroma in there as well which would make it taste nice. 
and perhaps even fortify the bitterness. I don't really, don't really care if it's a bit more bitter than it should be because hopefully all the uh, the grains and all that will compensate. Right, so we'll uh, leave this on in 15 minutes and she'll be sterilised and ready to go. So that's 10, uh, there's a hydrometer reading, it's 10, uh, the bricks is 10, 13. Um, so 10, 13 is uh, 26, uh, is 12, yeah, 42, 52, it's about 10, 52. So that's uh, more than what we need. So um, we'll stop boiling now. <laughs> 10.30, uh, 10.51, I'm looking for 10.50, so I'm banging my numbers really. So I've got the counter flow chiller on now, I'm uh, just recirculating the wort. Um, I'm going to start doing a bit of a whirlpool in a minute, but I'm going to stick some hops in there as well to just uh, be in there for the cooling part. So I'm going to wait till this goes down below 70, and I'll chop my, hop, chop my hops in. In the meantime, we'll just keep chilling down. I can't be really bothered to refreeze those hops, like that 50 grams of hops I've got left over, so I'll just toss them in and they'll uh, add some aroma to it, hopefully. So there's nice hoppy aromas as you like. Okay, so I've got my um, my fermenter chilled down. I've got my aeration rod in there. I've got my airing stuff all ready to go. This is all sterilized up ready. Uh, my fermentation fridge, which is over there somewhere, is just chilled down to about 18 degrees. Today I'm just going to sprinkle a packet of SO4 on. It'll be more than enough uh, in there for the beer, I think. And yeah, we'll just leave it to ferment for a week or two. So I've recirculated until it was down to about 35. I'm quite happy that it's coming out quite clear now. Let's have a look. It seems pretty clear, there's not much shit coming through. And you've got nice bits of nice hot oil floating on top there. At the same time I've got the uh, aeration hose in there, adding air to it as I fill it up. Um, perhaps I could, uh, what I might do is just get a little glass and put some into a glass and see how uh, how clear it is in the glass. Well I just poured it into a glass and I can say it wasn't clear. <laughs> I didn't even want to show you it. Anyway, uh, let's see how well the um, it's the water's at, coming out at 16 degrees. That's quite good. Uh, so I might just allow it to just slightly slip up to about 18 degrees. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's actually yeah, showing 15 and 16 degrees in places. Yeah, nice and cool. And also a good thing about having nice and cool is that um, it'll actually clump up quite well. Obviously you've got a hell of a lot of hops in there, so <laughs> that's not good. Okay, so I've got my packet of Safel 04. Um, I often see a lot of people go into very great extents to chopping the the sterilizing around yeast and all that but I, I don't particularly see a point in doing it it just seemed like a lot of fast to me um i mean these these little yeasty things are gonna populate this stuff with very fast and maybe a little bit of germ which is on your hand it's not gonna make much difference but so i think it's a bit of paranoia really um so yeah i've got well my knife has, my scissors have come out of the dishwasher so they are clean. And my hands are clean as well, but I've washed them. So there we go. So I'll just, it's actually airing at the moment, so I'm just going to sprinkle it over as it's airing. Um, but that, that yeast now is going to get straight into it and do its job. Right, I know we air out for a good um, 
maybe 15 minutes. So I'm going to finish that iron off and stick it, stick it straight into the fermenter, into the uh, fermentation fridge. And uh, that's the end. So that's the end. Clean up time now. Hopefully not too much washing. Um, I'm getting pretty good at actually just getting it all washed and put away pretty quickly, which is um, for God's sake, I hate having to do cleaning up like everybody, but uh, there we are. Um, as I said, yeast is in there. I'm gonna leave that now for a week, maybe two weeks. I don't believe it for 10 days. That's about, and I ferment for that 18 degrees for about three or four days until the bubbling just subsides on the blow tube. And once that's done, I ramped up to about 21, 22 degrees until it uh, completely stops fermenting. And then I give it an extra two days just to finish off. Um, then I take a take a sample, see if it's attenuated down enough. It's generally with a Safel 04, it's, it's, it's very reliable. It does, does its business, so I don't even bother sometimes. Um, Hit my numbers, 10.51, maybe about 10.50. I think 10.51's good. Um, I was looking for 10.50. Um, the IBU should be 10.40, or should be 40 IBUs. Maybe a little bit higher, maybe a bit lower, but I'm never ever gonna be able to tell what, what it is, but the, the proof will be in the pudding when you taste it. Um, and the other things, pH was low again. 10.51, oh, was it, what was it, 10, no, it wasn't, it's 51, it was, wasn't it, but um, I think it, and it looks as if it's mashed all right, efficiencies are fine, I've hit my, I hit about 85% efficiency, which is quite good, um, I've, and the pH turned out fine, so it started the, the ball, it, it, come, it was 10.56, as you saw, so, 5.6 which is and which is is perfectly fine I mean, I've ever had to, 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 to quick Google's to see what what it should be and they said between 10 5.6 and 5.8 the mash pH of the of the uh, the pH should be of the of the mash, pre pre boiled mash water which is fine I think I thought I've been coming under quite often actually and it's quite reassuring that when I do sparge with more Bristol water, it actually does bring the pH up to the right level. So, uh, yeah. Um, right, to look forward to. Uh, yeah, we've got to, I'll uh, maybe come back and show you bubbling in the next few hours and add it to this video. And in, I'll be racking in 10 days time out to a cordy keg, carving up for about maybe a, half a week week or so and we'll do first tastings hopefully it'll be quite yummy right i'm looking at the wrong camera i keep staring at the um the screen but uh have a good week everybody um hopefully you're gonna be seeing this this is on saturday so hopefully you'll see this on tuesday or wednesday maybe tagged on to the end of the homebrew wednesday but i'm gonna wash up and go out for a few beers for my mates have a good week, a good, good evening. Uh, uh, please like, subscribe, and leave any comments. Bye bye. Well, it's about as exciting as it gets, anyway. Well, this is about uh, one o'clock a day later, and you can see the yeasty, yeasty beasties are doing their, doing their business, making it nice and. Fermented. I don't generally open it at all, so uh, so there we are. See you all soon. Bye.